beta when that acts on the stellar cells so let's say this is a stellar cell of the liver the stellar cell is going to release collagen collagen and when the collagen is released what is it going to do it's going to lay around in the matrix and cause fibrosis what would that do fibrosis cirrhotic liver so an alcoholic a chronic alcoholic has a double strike problem one is that the liver is becoming fatty liver because of metabolic derangement and second is there is an increased bombardment of the pathogens coming from the GIT into the liver that would then cause increased triggering of the macrophages macrophages as part of the triggering would release tumor growth factor beta which is going to try to act on stellar cells and cause the repair on the local area and unnecessary repair unnecessary cementing this is like you pick up your home you pick up your room and lay that with the cement is that room useful anymore so that is what's happening here the stellar cell is going to release collagen in the surrounding tissue the tissue is going to become fibrosed cirrhotic that is how we get the cirrhotic tissue so that is the uh, cirrhotic liver <coughs> so uh, is that tumor necrosis factor alpha or tumor growth factor i think it is tumor necrosis factor so i wrote tgf so i'll just change this tumor necrosis factor alpha okay so that is the that is the damage in an alcoholic due to the um, alcohol itself and the role of the macrophages present so what are they doing in nowadays what is the research they're trying to knock out the tumor necrosis factor alpha receptors in the alcoholic animals so they're giving them alcohol and then they're knocking out these receptors for the tumor necrosis factor and then they're saying that if that causes the um, cirrhotic liver or not and they're saying that the cirrhotic liver disease is going down so anyways that is just a research but this is important thing to understand so the macrophages present in the liver are kupfer cells then if you go to the spleen very 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 important function inside the spleen the macrophages again are they are lining the the blood vessels in the or the sinuses in the spleen so again remember that the spleen structure is almost the same as the lymph node structure the only difference is lymph node has lymph passing through this and spleen has blood passing through this but the structure is almost the same we have red pulp we have white pulp we have the blood sinuses and so on so the only thing is inside the lymph node the sinuses are for the lymph and inside the spleen the sinuses will be filled with the blood so these macrophages are sitting on the sides of the sinuses and they are again looking up inside the inside the blood they are having their tentacles move in the blood and what are they doing they are capturing who are they capturing these things are capturing the old rbc's remember the old rbc's their cytoskeleton becomes rigid their their cell membranes are rigid they can they are not that flexible and the function of the spleen is actually to let the rbc's pass through a very narrow channel and that narrow channel would squeeze the rbc and if rbc is young and flexible it's going to squeeze through this and if it is not it's not going to squeeze through that if it cannot squeeze through it who's going to kill it macrophage macrophages are lining those sinuses and if an rbc is not able to move through the sinus macrophage is going to take a big bite out of that rbc and kill it so macrophages are sitting in the spleen as well where they are taking care of other pathogens and so on but one of the function is also that they are nibbling away on the old rbcs so that is in the spleen then in the alveoli the dust cells or the alveolar macrophages what is their function so alveolar macrophages so let's say this is the lung tissue and let's say we have alveolus and alveolus and alveolus and in these alveoli are sitting macrophages as well so these macrophages what are they doing they again are doing very important function just imagine this keep this in mind macrophages have put themselves strategically 
on the locations where foreigners are coming in from, where pathogens can come in from. So under the skin, it's an important area. We get the skin break underneath is a macrophage. So as the bacteria jump into the skin break and say, oh, well, I got a tissue damage here, macrophage is sitting downstairs, down in the skin to eat up those bacteria. Similarly, look at this. When the GIT is connected into our portal blood system and into the liver, macrophages are sitting there to filter it out. Look at the spleen. When the, when the blood is circulating and there is any chance of any pathogens or old RBCs present, macrophages are sitting them to filter them out. Similarly, the lungs system is actually a very important system because we're breathing in all the time weird air, which has pathogens and pollens and so many things. These extra things which are coming in, these pathogens which are coming in, these will be trapped by the alveolar macrophages. These macrophages are also called dust cells. What do they eat? They eat carbon particles, they eat silica, silica particles, they eat asbestos particles, they eat uh, many such other substances or particles which are coming in into our um, tissue. One very important pathogen which enters the lungs is the uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So they eat the TB bacterium as well. And once they eat up the TB bacterium, uh, TB bacteria has a tendency to evade the death inside the macrophage and it starts living in there. So that is how the granulomas or, or big cells are forming or the giant cells are forming. But anyways, tuberculosis bacterium, silica, asbestos, carbon particles and other particles are eaten up by the macrophages. Usually what they do is they eat them, they kill those things, they digest them and they, they regurgitate them. But sometimes when they cannot digest a bacterium or a particle, for example, mycobacterium tub tuberculosis, then the macrophages, these will form. So let's say this is a macrophage, this is a macrophage, and this is a macrophage. Here is, a, here is some pathogen sitting inside a macrophage, and macrophage thinks that it cannot, it cannot dissolve this particle. What are they going to do? These macrophages are going to fuse and they are going to form a big giant cell. They're going to all fuse together. They would have the nucleus looking like a horseshoe nucleus and they would try to trap and encapsulate that substance inside them. So this is a normal behavior of a macrophage that if it cannot digest a particle, what is it going to do? It's going to fuse with other macrophages and create a protective wall around that thing. That is what is called a giant cell. That is what can be actually seen in histological slides with a horseshoe type nucleus. That is also something which is called epithelioid cell because it looks like an epithelial cell. It is not an epithelial cell but it looks like one. So these giant cell or Lang Langhand cells or the epithelioid cells are similar things. These are really fused macrophages. So that is in the alveolar and of course, in the TB patients, you would see this a lot. Then if you see here, very, 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 very important thing. Inside the brain, the macrophages which live in the brain are called microglias. So microglias are actually macrophages. And what is their function? Microglias are, imagine this. So brain is a immune privileged tissue. What does that mean? That normal immune cells cannot enter the brain. Normal immune system chemicals and cells cannot enter the brain. Brain has been walled off from the normal cardiovascular system. So the blood-brain barrier is present. The cells cannot go in there. So who is already living in the brain? Who is already in there is the macrophages. And what macrophages? These macrophages are called microglia. They are different from other macrophages. They're slightly different from other macrophages, but very important thing. Why are they different? Because imagine this, they are the only protectors inside the brain. So how do they work? They work just like the other macrophages. We'll talk about their function in more detail today. But one important thing is that these microglia have potassium channels. These are unique potassium channels, and they can very quickly sense the infection around them via those potassium channels, 
and they 